It is gray and cloudy again out today, but this morning I have, honest to God, got rainbows shooting out of every orifice in my body, just to give you a beautiful visual right there. I am so, so pleased that I came here. This place is an absolute palace. Uh, from the outside, you'd never know it. From the inside, you'd never know it either. But, you know, compared to where I was, primitive backwoods camping, this place is wonderful. As you can see, there is a wood stove, an actual wood stove here. Um, uh, last night was just so wonderful. You know, if you, before the whole, you know, this whole situation came down, you know, if you had found someone living in a shack like this, you'd be like, oh, you poor dear, let's, let's get you out of there. This is atrocious. But, you know, uh, yeah, it, it reminds me of studies that were done, uh, you, know, uh, you know, prior to all this about, like, happiness. You know, people's individual happiness and, and how much of it seemed, uh, you know, at least for people that were trying, didn't break out of this mindset, but like uh, how much of happiness was really based upon kind of like comparing yourself to other situations. Uh, you know, it, people who might maybe grew up in not that great situations. Uh, you know, if they, you know, started doing better and they, they had more disposable income in life, you know, they would have a great deal of happiness where someone else that had that same level of income, um, uh, you know, but maybe it always been there or, you know, just to have more income, you know, their happiness would be lower. So, like, happiness is such a comparative thing. That's why so frequently people who engaged in volunteer work uh, would tend to be more happy, uh, you know, in terms of their life satisfaction because, you know, they can kind of compare their lives to the lives of other people that aren't that fortunate. And, you know, that gives the people that are doing the volunteering, you know, that sense of, you know, you know happiness that, you know, you know, they, they can kind of see the comparison and, um, you know, appreciate what they have. And boy, was I appreciating what I had last night. You know, again, just a, a, a dirt floor, you know, dirt, and there's uh, some concrete in here. You know, the, 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 the slats and the walls, there's still air that comes through, but so much better. So much better than what I've been doing the past, the past few months. Uh, you know, even down to some, a simple thing like this. Here is... One of the things I appreciated most about last night is for the past several months, ever since I acquired this wonderful device, which I honestly don't even know how to operate. I just, you know, I kept it, and I've, I've kept it in, you know, my other shelter there. But, you know, every night there was no room in there. I always had this thing kind of like poking up against me, and it's just so much space in here. It is like a palace in here. And it's... um. <laughs> it's just wonderful. So, um, yeah, there are six of these in here, six of these tubs. Uh, and uh, because of what's in here, it's led me to believe that this place here was someone's prepper retreat. This was the place that someone was planning to come to. At this point, no one's come here. Uh, I would think that if they were going to get here, they already would have gotten here. So I think that the people that own this place are probably no more. Uh, and it's, it's kind of shocking that no one's come in here because I know people have come by. There was a data card that was left up there. But I guess, you know, you judge a book by its cover. It just looks like some kind of tumbled down shack. People figured there was no point in, you know, breaking the locks and coming in here. And um, <laughs> I'm glad they didn't because, again, six of these things. And they're packed the way that a prepper would have packed for air travel. They always said, like, if you're traveling with your family, you got a bunch of bags. Don't put all this, all your whatever in one bag because if you lose one bag, you're going to lose all that, that person's clothes. So you want to kind of spread people's clothes and essentials out across all the bags in case one gets lost. So six of these, they're all pretty much the same. Stuff spread out across it. And it is uh, it's just a treasure trove. So let's, let's pop into this. It is absolutely amazing. Ah. The first thing that struck me when I opened these yesterday was, frankly, the smell. Uh, there is a little jar that they put in here. It's got uh, mothballs, and they put the lid on just kind of loosely there, I guess not to overpower it. I guess I have this to thank for there not being rodents in there. Then they have a bag over it, which I guess keeps the smell of the food that's in here in, and keeps the smell of the mothballs out. So, yeah. there all right, so right on top, and again, all six of these are fairly the same. Uh, there's a, a couple different uh, individual things in, in each of them. One of them is, uh, this is the only bin that had reading glasses. Uh, this person apparently needs reading glasses to read, so they, uh, they put these in there. I guess, I'm sure they have their own pair as well. This is probably a backup of theirs. Uh, right here is a 
a journal, and a pencil. And that, that's pretty. That's a pretty cool idea. I hadn't actually thought myself about that, but that'd be a really nice feeling. I guess I've been doing these videos, or kind of my journal, but you know, to be able to to write things down, or take notes for yourself, or even just draw or sketch. I think that would be a, a nice a nice uh, asset to have, and I appreciate that I have it. Uh, there's a lot of books in here. Uh, there's these two right here, Survival Wisdom and Know-How and Country Wisdom and Know-How. And these are, well, these, these might explain why the reading glasses are in here. Uh, there's a ton of information in here, really small uh, text. It's all about uh, different types of cooking. In this one, what was that back here? It looks like uh, uh, how to make cooling coils, different types of plumbing, like all, all sorts of information. This is like homesteading. And this one is, well, more akin to what I'm doing right now, is living off the land kind of stuff. There's a, you know, yarrow, different uh, types of um, edible plants, poisonous plants. Uh, so much information in these. I, you know, I, I think I probably know a fair bit of this, but uh, I'm definitely going to bone up on this myself. There's all sorts of information in these two books. And uh, going down, there's a specific book on gardening. I think that's a really helpful guide to have. Uh, and then we get into some less practical books, but you know, these make a lot of sense too. There's just some reading. This is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I actually uh, picked up uh, John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath, and I've read that a couple of times, so I wouldn't mind something a little bit different. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's uh, Dune is in here. I, this seems like one of those books that it's kind of a big book. Maybe they'd always planned on reading it, and they figured this would be a, a good time if they ever found themselves out here. And I'm guessing that these people had kids because there are a bunch of uh, Magic Treehouse books, a lot of them uh, here. And you know, I, I'm going to be totally honest, I'm probably going to read these as well, <laughs> just for some variety. I, look, at it's the, the capers of the nights at dawn, you know, I'm, I'm excited to get into anything that's different, even if it's, uh, even if it's kids' books. Um, we've got this in there, Holy Bible. I, I'll be honest, this doesn't really have any value to me personally, although I'll you know, I'll probably read through it. You know, it's, it's a book you always hear about, and honest to God, I, I've never read it, and I, I think a lot of Christians have never actually read it either. So, uh, you know, I'll probably make some time for that also. Uh, going down from here, it's a lot of food and, uh, you know, useful supplies. Matches, yay, right off the bat. I'm going to treat these kind of as though I don't have them. There's uh, 50 books. Each one has 20 matches in there. That's 1,000 matches in here, although it looks like they, they maybe went in there, took out maybe one, one book of match. So it's 998, uh, 998. I, I, I can't do math right now. There's a lot of matches in there. Psyched about that. A uh, couple of things here that maybe aren't so useful for me. Um, I don't know what these go to, but they, they don't go to my 9mm Glock, that's for sure. I don't know what the, the caliber of this is. It's uh, well, the, well, One thing that's kind of interesting, and this is a good idea, they put a 20 uh, at the top, which I think uh, the idea there means that they got 20 rounds in here, because you can't really see how many rounds there are in here. Uh, so I guess that, that maybe that was their note to themselves, that these, these are both full, and they have 20 rounds in them. Uh, so I guess these things maybe hold 20 rounds? I don't know. Apparently. So I, I, I guess I'm going to hold on to these for, you know, trade. I could trade them with someone so that person can then take them and shoot me with them. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, this, oh, actually, you know what? This is probably caliber, whatever this is. 5.5, AR 5.56. 5.56, 45 millimeter, whatever that is. They've got a, a bunch of boxes of that. I, at least I assume that's the same thing. I don't know. It's not 9 millimeter, so it's not of any immediate use to me, whatever it is. Um, there's a lot of food in here. Um, there are pineapple rings, uh, a lot of sugar and calories in that. That's great. Um, we got some uh, kind of granola bars, energy bars there. There are vitamins here, uh, and that is a really cool asset to have because uh, you know you can get enough calories, but if you don't have the, the nutrition to go with it, you're going to be in trouble. So, so that's pretty cool. Uh, talk about calories. We've got. Olive oil, a whole thing of olive oil right here, and that's going to be really valuable. I can cook with that, and you know the number of calories in here. You know, people always used to be afraid of this, but now these numbers are your friends. Now, uh, there's 200 servings, and each serving has 120 calories. That's an awful lot of calories that I'll be able to get out of this. And again, there's uh, five others of these in the other 
the other cases. Um, these here are um, bags of uh, dehydrated vegetables. So I can use these, you know, to make soups and things. Uh, each one's a pound, so it's two pounds of dehydrated vegetables. Some of the other ca cases actually had more than two of them in there. So it's pounds and pounds of vegetables. This is uh, chickpeas, also known as garbanzo beans. A lot of calories, a lot of protein in there. Uh, I've got, uh, looks like uh, pinto beans with maybe some black beans mixed in there. Here, another bag of that. Uh, down at the bottom, I, I kind of looked at this earlier. I, I tore through all these earlier. Uh, th uh, this is a, a white flour. There's two 25, bag, uh, 20, two 25 pound bags of white flour at the bottom of each. So each of these cases had 50 pounds of flour in it. And uh, these are some uh, walnuts, a big thing of walnuts. Uh, and over here, here is, these are some interesting things. Uh, this is, can I get this open? Let's see if I can get it open. This looks like silver, like silver dollars or something. I know, you know, preppers were always talking about the idea of stacking silver as a way of, you know, you could barter uh, when the shit hits the fan. I mean, they're, they're awfully pretty, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know their actual value right now. Um, yeah, I certainly haven't come across anyone that I think would be looking for silver, but you know, certainly I'll hold on to that. Uh, so a bunch of pieces of silver in there. And this one, this is interesting. I've never actually held this in my hands before. This is, these are gold coins in this one. Got a little thing in the top there. Okay, a bunch of little gold coins. At least they, they seem to be gold. <laughs> it's like pirate treasure. So a bunch of a bunch of these. I haven't counted them. There's a lot in there. Again, you know, I I don't know the real value of some of this stuff because uh, you know I know what I'm looking for right now. You know, is food. But uh, you know, still it might have some value at some point. I think you don't really start thinking about uh, accumulating this kind of stuff until you know you have a surplus of this kind of stuff. Uh, speaking of other things that maybe don't have any value anymore. These are, that's money, uh, $1,000 in 20. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars US currency in, uh, in 20s. And uh, <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know that anyone would trade anything for that other than for firewood at this point, but uh, I don't know. The, uh, just through habit, I, I can't bear my, I, I, I can't bring myself to just burn them, so I will just hold on to those and, you know, see what happens with them. Uh, last thing in here is, uh, this is, uh, uh, turkey jerky, I guess, in here. There's a couple pounds of turkey jerky in each of these. So, that is, uh, that's the deal with what I've got. I'm going to just kind of close this up for now. And I want to keep these closed and locked. Again, it's kind of surprising that no rodents got in there. I'm glad that they didn't, but I want to make sure that that continues to be the case. Uh, because, you know, this kind of stuff, you know, you could buy it for a dime a dozen before all this went down. But now it, it's worth, it's, it's literally worth its weight in gold. And in fact, you know, all the silver that's in there, you know, I don't think anyone would even give me anything for that at this point. I certainly would not accept silver. For I, I would not. I will not trade any of this food for silver or gold or any. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. 
And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.